Hi everybody, my name is Natalia and I'm an Education Officer with the Literature Centre in Fremantle. The Premier's Book Awards are the peak awards for West Australian writers. The Literature Centre has come together with our champion authors shortlisted for the Premier's Prize in Writing for Children. We are literally celebrating the best in the West. So come join in the conversation at hashtag readwithme and see what our authors have in store for you. Happy reading. Hello and welcome to Celebrating the Best in the West, brought to you by the Literature Centre. I'm Michael Speechley and today I'll be talking about my book, The Gift. So when I wrote this story, The Gift, uh, I had quite a few different inspirations for it. But one of the very first inspirations that I had, and there was about five in total, was this concept of the garden. I decided to pull out all of the plants in my garden and put in native plants instead. Parents used to come and visit and dad used to get really frustrated at me and he'd say, Mike, all you have to do is just pull out one weed a day. Once you pull that weed out, the other plants will take over and then eventually after 365 days, you won't have any weeds at all and they won't be able to grow because you've dealt with that problem. And I, and I really love that as a, a concept of a metaphor. So the second inspiration for this story deals with loss. And this second page here, the second spread, has an image that really captures that sense of loss. It's an interesting shot. There's, there's little hints in the little picture frame here. But everybody experiences loss. And I think this picture really captures that. So the third inspiration for this story is travel. The only image that I could imagine in this story was a, a garden full of flowers. So what I decided to do was to go to Europe and just paint flowers. Pretty much every day just went to a flower shop, I'd buy one flower, and then I'd sit down over lunch and I'd paint that flower. So this flower that I did in Paris is one of the most important pictures that I drew the whole time I was away. When I was painting this particular flower, there was an old lady sitting next to me with her family and she kept looking at me and she was wearing black. When I finished my painting, I grabbed the flower and I gave it to her and she held it to her chest and she started to cry. And I walked out thinking, wow, that's kind of cool. And, and that really did affect the way that I thought about this particular story. So the fourth inspiration for this book is advice. And I tried to get as much advice as I could because I knew that I had a story. And then I sat down with my publisher, told her about the idea, and she just gave me this great bit of advice. She just said, why don't you make it about a young person and an old person? And I thought, that is the solution. So um, a few days later, on New Year's Day, I did this sketch of Rosie. As soon as I did it, I knew that that was the right one. So the fifth inspiration for this story is friends and family. So Rosie embodies what it was like for my friends and family to be observing some of the tricky situations I was navigating through, but also offering a little gift. And it was an unusual one. So sometimes your friends and family are so important because they'll be the ones who will give you a call, cook you a meal, have a chat, and that can make the world of a difference. So this book here is an interesting book because it's a love story, but it's not the usual kind of love story. The usual kind of love story will be about romantic love or it could be about familial love. This book is about altruistic love, which is a little bit different, but it's when you show love for other people. Sometimes you don't even know who they are. Well, I'm just going to read a little bit of this book for you. I'll only read the beginning. You can read the rest yourself. The Gift by me. Most people thought the old house with its unloved garden was abandoned, but Rosie knew someone lived there. Rosie had lived across the road for as long as she could remember. She often wondered who was inside the old house, but she'd never actually seen anyone. She'd spotted a shadow once, back lit against the old attic window. And sometimes a hand reached through a crack in the front door to snatch in the deliveries. Somehow Rosie was sure it was an old woman who lived there. Is she mean and cranky? wondered Rosie. Or is she just lonely? Rosie sometimes felt lonely. She really missed her mum. She missed her silly songs. She missed her crazy creations. Her mum saw the beauty in everything. But most of all, she missed growing plants with her in their tiny courtyard. And that's all I'm going to give you. <laughs>